Hello, I'm Lewis Adams, and welcome to Local Chats. Best known playing guitar for you am I, Davey Lane also has a respectable solo career. His new album, I'm Gonna Burn Out Bright, drops on the 18th of August this year. I caught up with him to have a chat about his upcoming record. Hello, Davey. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? That's all right. I'm, I'm doing well. Let's start with your new album, I'm Gonna Burn Out Bright. Uh, you recorded that with a number of guests. Can you tell me a bit about the process? Well, yeah. I mean, there are a few guests on the record, but um, actually in the solo record, in the, in the truest sense of the word, I, I kind of uh, I made a record with my band before that. And that was that was great, but I've always, uh, you know, I've always loved records. Like, uh, I mean, uh, big heroes of mine are guys like, uh, you know, Todd Rundgren, Nick Lowe, McCartney, guys, guys who are great writers who can also produce and play their own stuff. So it's kind of been a little dream of mine to to make a record like that. I mean, it's like said, it kind of sounds like a vanity project, but. Um, <laughs> I kind of um, did, did it for the most part myself, but got in some some guests. I mean, I guess whatever I needed for whatever particular song that was outside of my skill set, I guess I'd, I'd maybe ask some mates who could uh, come and help me out. Extending upon your vision, in a way. Yeah, yeah, that's it. One song on the record, I needed some... Uh, I, I kind of had, had like a droney sitar track in mind, but I, I touched a sitar, but I, don't know, I certainly don't know how to play one, so... I've got uh, my man Stu from King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard to come and play that and uh, on another track, which is sort of like an 80s synth kind of thing. I've got uh, Brennan Graham to program some drums for me. And I knew who was a friend who could do something that was outside of my own skill set. Then, yeah, I'd call, call on him. Are uh, you doing a show to celebrate its release? Yeah, it's, it's a little show at the gasometer upstairs on uh, August the 18th. It's, it's a tiny little room, so I'd make it more of a party than a, than a gig, really. That sounds awesome. Now, you've collaborated with a lot of different artists over the years. Well, I, I guess I've never really actively gone and sought out to panic than that. I guess it's the kind of thing where, you know, like in the case of Jimmy Barnes, you know, I've, I've been playing with him on and off for... Oh, about 12 years now, so if he's doing a new record, he'll um, call me up and ask if, I, if I'm up for being involved, and I say yes, <laughs> and, uh, and away we go. Over 13, 14, 15 years, or however long it is, the list is going to be reasonably long, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning then. What really inspired you to get into music or start taking it uh, seriously as a career originally? Music consumes my entire life. I'm very lucky to be able to play music for a, a job. It's my obsession, it's my hobby. I do as much for my mental health as anything. I find like I'm not the greatest communicator and if there are certain things I can articulate in a song that I can't say to somebody. I guess at the beginning, the Beatles and the Who for me growing up, all those 60s kind of bands and then Things that were in my parents' record collection that, that maybe back then were deemed as guilty pleasures, things like ELO and, and, and Wings and all that kind of stuff. I, I guess I just heard, you know, when I first heard Sgt. Pepper, I, that really opened opened the door for me. It's like music is like can be so kaleidoscopic and colourful. And from there on, I was just obsessed with, okay, like how do they write these kind of songs and how do they record these kind of songs? So, yeah, from there on, it, it just became a, a, a real obsession for me. And, continues to this day, I guess. Uh, you talked about songwriting being very good for your mental health. Uh, how do you find that comes through to, uh, let's say, the finished product like your new album? Sometimes it seems as though I write in non sequiturs, so I'm talking lyrically. I'm quite prone to overthinking things. Sometimes I, I, I don't even know what's going on in my head, so I like a, like a process of catharsis or, or just write. Sometimes it could be like the next day or it might be, it might even take me a year to realise what it is I've written about, but more often than not, I'll be like, I mean, I could be singing a song that I wrote a year ago at a gig, but oh, that's what that line's about. <laughs> I, I kind of, <laughs> that's just how I, I write, really. It just kind of comes out of my brain and I don't, I don't think about it too much. And sometimes it's, it's, it's easily apparent what I'm writing about, sometimes it's not, but hopefully if anyone listens to it, they can extract that their own meaning out of it. The interpretation kind of comes later. Yeah, absolutely. You're currently doing a tour with uh, UMI and Hoodoo Gurus, is that right? 
Yeah, that's right. Just played in Canberra last night and um, heading to Wollongong. How is the tour going? Yeah, fantastic. We just go out there and do what we do and have fun and go to play a show and come off stage and have the hooty to look forward to as well. It's all good fun. You would have been quite young when you joined UMI, which were already well established at the time. What was that experience like? Was it daunting at all? Oh, it was extremely daunting. I'd, I'd come straight out of school and had it high school band that would play at you know in the schoolyard at lunch times but i've never played in a proper band let alone a well-established band that already had a bunch of number one records and vast and varied discography behind them yeah no, i was extremely daunting i was i was straight out of school into the band pretty much it took two or three years i guess to, to kind of settle in and feel like i was actually contributing something of, of any worth to the um to the group looking back on it now i can i can laugh about it but it's quite terrified at the time sounds like it would have been a learning experience at the very least yeah absolutely it was a steep learning curve you've got your new album coming but what's next for davy lane Oh, well, I'm, I'm making another new record at the moment. Basically, it's all songs that I've, I've written on piano. The record that's coming out, ABC Records knocked it back and told me that there's not enough guitar on the record. And I should, you know, I'm known as a guitar player, so I should be um, making a uh, more guitar-heavy record. When I received that news, I thought, OK, well, I just, I just got a piano. I just started playing piano at home, so I thought, all right, well... Screw you guys! I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make a record with no guitar on it. And that's what I'm doing at, at, at the moment. Just getting that together and working on lyrics for for, for songs. But yeah, that, that that's coming together. And I'm always kind of writing and recording. So I'm not too sure what lay, lays ahead in the in the future. But my own music only really reaches a handful of people. But like I say, you know, I've got songwriting for mental health. It's, for me, it's a compulsion. It's something that I have to keep doing. I guess I'll just I'll just keep doing that. Thank you, Davy. I hope you have a good show tonight in Wollongong and a fantastic rest of tour. Thank you for having a chat with me. No worries, thanks for your time. You can find more interviews at localchats.com.au Hit us up on Twitter or Facebook at Local Chats. Thank you for listening. Bye! (laughs)